All right, what's up, everyone? My name is Edmund. I'm League of Legends coach for the Village Vikings, and I'm joined today by Ben Pham, who used to be one of our players. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Pham, class of 2020 alumni. I was the jungler for the team that won state. Uh, was substitute jungler uh, for the team. And I'm joined with Edmund here as my co-caster. Today will be uh, welcome to a game between VHS Esports and Concordia. For TAS Finals. Alright, so it looks like Concordia is going to ban out Kane and uh, Cassiopeia. I think those are two target bans against Doxy, our uh, mid laner, because he is a Master Kane player. Although he does play Kane in the jungle, he also uh, can play in the mid lane as well. Uh, the any ban, I believe, is a target ban for our support, uh, Vlad, because uh, Vlad is really lethal on the Annie. Uh, looks like they're going to pick the Zareth anyways. We're going to respond with the Jarvan 4. Really broken jungler in this patch. Thoughts? I mean, for sure, like, Radu is known to have extremely good roams, especially synergizing with Daxi and Archer in topside. Uh, Bot side, I think, is a relatively safe lane. That's why they banned Annie, because they didn't want Vlad to have an easier time in bot lane. And now we t uh, took a Filios for uh, Jerry, because it's one of his best champions. And they respond with Hecarim. Jarvan, which I think is not a really ideal pick to go against the Jarvan's mobility, but in a way, I guess it's a good way for them to uh, disengage whenever Jarvan gets a gets a pick on their enemy team. Yon immediately being hovered as a response to the Ari here. Uh, Aphelios being picked up pretty early. There's a lot of attack damage, in my opinion, in uh, Village's side. They're gonna have to get some magic damage uh, on the second round of their draft. Now, as the second uh, part of the pick and ban phase starts. Let's see what village is going to ban here. We might have a chance to see Archer's Akali here uh, for an AP pick, if that's the case. And maybe Vlad's going to pick up some AP champ, maybe something that's uh, unconventional. Yeah, uh, a little known fact about village uh, and about Concordia Lutheran actually, their mid laner actually plays Akali. So Akali <laughs> is a slightly contested pick, but owing to the fact they already got like Zareth and Ari, I don't think they're going to pick the uh, Akali. Yeah, it's very unlikely, but I'm not sure why they didn't first pick Ari, because they know that Daxi is the enemy laner, maybe, and Daxi does not play Ari, so maybe that's a, a counter pick to what Daxi could have picked in this game. So I think uh, Ari coming out without knowing the enemy like mid laner, it's a bit too early, because Ari can be countered by Yasuo, Yon, which, you know, is which Doxy immediately took. Uh, now we see Pantheon and Mundo being banned. I do like the Mundo ban because um, Aphelios and Yon, uh, they don't really do that well you against like, huge tanks, fear. especially when you have like Zareth and Hecarim, right? If the Hecarim is allowed to do whatever he wants, the CC train is gonna be massive for Concordia. You're right, there's so many options that we can pick here. We already have the massive engage by Jarvan and the Yon and all. But if we have a chance to get someone with a hard CC, maybe a Zara or a Filios, maybe like a Nami or Lulu, that's even yes, better. Yeah. And the Kali ban comes through because they know the Archer could have picked it for AP damage. Yeah, definitely good ban from Concordia Lutheran. Let me see if I, if um, our support's gonna pick Heimerdinger here. I think there's like a world where this kind of works, even though the Zareth is long range. Uh, otherwise, uh, you mentioned the Zyra earlier. I do agree that's a very good choice okay it looks like the lux is coming out lux is a good alternative to zara in this meta yeah I, i'm not too sure about the lux aphelios lane oh but, but a draven is being picked by rizasaurus rex that's gonna be a very unique bot lane i've never seen that's really in aggressive in bot lane yeah. never <laughs> say so myself incredibly aggressive so um radu has to punish that um like aggression with a jarvan if not they can actually run away with this game an Orn pick for tank. Yeah, I think um, Toasty McToast does frequent the Orn a lot. However, I think Mordekaiser looks really lethal. I don't know if Archer is willing to consider it because, you know, he, but, you know, Akali and Pantheon are banned. So it is a good pick if Archer, like, is willing to. Oh no, he's hovering the vein. Wow. Wow. It is a vein top lane against Orn for Archer or. Yeah, it is. It should be. Or is it Yone? No, it's not, right? It has to be Yone mid. Or is there something that's like going on? No, it is the main top. top. 
Okay, so uh, Vayne top countering an Orn pick, and while well, looking at the comp itself, our team is relatively squishy, but we're really aggressive. Yeah, I mean, Village is going into this match with a market like mechanics and rank advantage, but look at the state of our like draft. We have no tanks. Our CC is pretty minimal. Meanwhile, the enemy team is like Orn or Hecarim, right? In my opinion, if uh, these teams are of equal uh, skill, uh, the left side draft is better. Well, this is really, really risky for our team. That's for sure. We're really aggressive. However, if we play this right, it's no big deal. It's just like a regular game. And I think we're going to secure the win. All right. Three minute spectator delay. So, Ben, as a jungler yourself, right? Have you ever played the Jarvan 4 against Hecarim matchup? Uh, well, quite often, I think that Hecarim himself has much more damage than Jarvan, that's for sure. But in terms of a team fight, you can't really enable Hecarim if you don't have someone with a buff like a Yumi, like a Nami, or even someone with a hard CC. Well, they have an Orn, they have an Ari charm, they have Sarah stuns, the slows. But even then, they can't really rely on Hecarim and Gage all the time because in this meta right now, Hecarim is more of a damage dealer than a Gager back in, well, back in my towns when I played because um, of the Lethality build and the tier build. But with Jarvan, he has good disengage, he has a, he has a, all the traps a lot of people, and Draven has no dashes, Zero has no dashes, Orn can break uh, Jarvan's ult, but that doesn't really matter if he ults already. Ari has a dash, uh, Hecarim has an ult. But the point is, Jarvan himself is such a good pick towards this Draven that's immobile, that the Hecarim has to respond with something that like for himself, which is either to catch the Vayne top, or the Philios, or even the Lux. Yeah, I see. Um, the problem which gets me worried is if Jarvan 4 ults the Hecarim, Hecarim will still have the ultimate to get out of the Cataclysm. And uh, Jarvan has to time his ult correctly. He either has to wait out the, ca the like unstoppable charge from Hecarim before he Cataclysms in, or he's going to have to pick a new target, you know, like Draven or Zerath, those targets without flash, they're really, really squishy, not much mobility. Uh, Ari will still have the ultimate to get out of the Cataclysm, uh, and I think in general it's not good to ult the Orn. Exactly, I think this is a very, very skill-based matchup in jungle uh, in terms of what they're going to do, how they're going to rotate around the map, what they're going to focus on for priority, either bot side, top side, or even just objectives since they choose in lanes and farming. But looking at the state of bot lane, it's going to be a heavy kill lane with Draven and Aphelios and Lux and Serath. And I'm actually <laughs> kind of interested to see if the Draven's going to get a chance to pop off here with how squishy the Lux is in the early game. Yeah, I think uh, definitely bot site. It's whoever gets ahead first will have a lot of control over the game until about 20 minutes. That's when, you know, Aphelios, Lux, or Draven, Zerath can start to shrug off the like effects from the lane phase and play to for their team. Yet, you see, like, the Jarvan, I don't think the Jarvan really needs to gank Orn that much because Vayne wins the lane in isolation. Same with the Yon, because the Yon is kind of a counterpick to Ari. So I would like to see Radu just like hard camp bot lane, pitch a tent, and you know, get us to win that way. Speaking about that, I want to take our attention uh, up in top lane here with Archer. Vayne, you know, is a really late game champion, and with Hecarim and Orn, the, the priority for top lane is probably there, because they don't want the Vayne to snowball into late game, and then we just like eventually win the game. But what happens if the Hecarim just starts focusing top side instead here, and disable the Vayne so that it's even harder for Archer to do anything towards mid to late game? Yeah, I would say if I was a Hecarim player, I would try as much as possible to make sure the Vayne dies as much as possible in lane phase because uh, that buys Orn levels as well. And the earlier you get the ornaments, the better it is for the entire team because then they can resist, you know, the Aphelios damage. Then Vayne can, uh, you know, can be countered with uh, items such as like Frozen Heart or Thorn Mail. So definitely, definitely like a very unique dynamic coming into this game as we're loading into Summer's Rift right now. All right, uh, while we're waiting for the game to fully load in, let's, uh, let's, let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, 
it looks like it might be a pause happening. I'm uh, not too sure what's going on, except uh, the map's not fully loaded in with our champions as well. Yeah, curious to see if Village goes for an invade or whatever strat they want to do. I think um, Concordia Lutherans has faced us before, so I'm predicting they're going to try to do a five point. Uh, but y'all know Village, right? They really love going like bot lane into that bush and just taking the 5v5. Oh, here we go. There is a high chance that we do uh, a counter invade to what uh, Scordia might pull off here. Because we do have the Mox Q, that's the possible start in um, early game. And we do have the... Um, well, we, we only have the Lux Q. But with a good amount of damage from the burst that we have in our side, this should be... Oh! This should be a four-man bot lane. Five-man bot lane in the bot Five-man bot lane from Village. This is the Village Classic. We already got Draven and the Xerath coming into the bot lane. Let's see if they've managed to go into the bush because if they are, you know that Lux like Snare is going to be right there waiting for them. Okay, it doesn't Slide. look like They did not know that we're coming. However... Ooh, this is going to be there! Get a flash out. The win from... Oh, That's a flash from Zerath. Good yeah. early start. <laughs> yeah. Our team gets the flash even though Vlad did whip the Lux. Not sure why he just starts to get there. And uh, overall, I think this just makes bot e a even better target for us. It's a massive, massive pressure point for in here that Zerath it has no flash, no way to escape, and Lux Root is going to hurt him much, much more towards like the early game stages. I also like that Radu during that engagement with uh, Zerath, he threw out the flag so that the additional attacks uh, would be uh, benefited by like Aphelio and Buff. Yeah, we expected to burst it down in time, but I, I haven't seen anybody on the side use any spells, so I guess it's still uh, considered a word. Oh, this might be a level 2 gank. You see, I already see the Jarvis passing downwards towards the bot. Let's see if Village can catch them out here. Yeah, and it seems like they're not noticing this push here. Ooh, yeah. Glad it is, is a level 2 gank. Level 2 gank. Oh, no. We are going the Draven. No All flash right, on Draven. Draven. No, no flash. flash on Zerath. Looks like it is a good day. A good day for Zerath here. It's got the first level of this. And we catch the Draven. Double kill for insane. Jerry. That's insane level 2 gank from Rocky here. This is a great early start for us, and the Draven might be having a hard time. Yeah, insane Q from Justified there. Uh, I, the Draven walks up just a little bit too far, manages to get caught up by the Jarvan, and yep, that flash, it really hurts, even though it's already two minutes into the game, they're paying for it already. Oh, now you can see Radu here already pathing vertically towards the red side of the jungle and of course wizard lord have to go to the top side and taking his red but does Radu know about this yeah i do like the strat from wizard lord here he already realizes that bot is going to be losing so he opts to take the enemy red buff instead which he knows he's not going to be there because jarvin's bot side uh i am curious as to whether Radu will gank bot level three we already know both flashes are down we has the heal on the Zerath, but that's about it it seems like they do know the Hecarim is topside. Archer realizes after he hit the, um, the Vision Ward. And now Radu is stuck in bot side and Hecarim's ganking topside. Okay, Archer with his best of boss FFS impression here. Let's see if he can get away. He flashes and goes away. But so does Wizard Lord. He doesn't whiff. And he gets out. And the bot, bot lane is really, really aggressive right now. Yeah, heal already out from Zerath. This is going to be a very imminent dive, you know. The Draven's probably only 200 HP. Anything like that catches him, he probably dies from it. Meanwhile, a knockup is going game. in. Yep. Then nothing comes out of it. However, Radu is still in bot side. Here comes Radu. Massive wave coming in. Coconut Trenton on Another the killing game. spree. Slappy Cat gets rooted. Uh, it's going to be a double kill for the uh -oh. Aphelios. Okay, but oh, our no. master player is in trouble. Gets killed by Wizard Lord. Unlucky. A one for two trash, I say it's still worth it, uh, like no matter what. Draven is falling further behind. HDX, you know him. He's the best player in the team. He can come back from a situation like this. There's no, there's no point in ganking him if he just keeps getting the, the farm up. 
And then he keeps asserting the pressure out of bot lane so that Rodri can come back bot again and disable his driven even more towards late game. Yeah, I am curious because Doxy does have both summoner spells up. Uh, I was wondering if if he used both of those spells, could he have potentially like outplayed the Hecarim, you know, maybe dodge one of the Qs? I assume he wanted to keep it so that he can go aggressive later on when he has ult before the Ari does. Yeah, and now we see Justifies clearing the bot side of the map. He's already punished this aggressive Draven like pick like handily have a massive 3k gold lead already for village esports pretty decent damage coming from the lux poke here yeah two level difference between lux and the Zerath. that's gonna hurt and draven has no chance of touching the minions Zerath is down to lower than 50 percent hp and there's nothing really like they can do about it radu is already on the oh my god a good flash queue from Vlad, and we get Seraph. Yeah, Next right we now. We have massive Dragon Pryo. I think the enemy team, enemy team realizes this. And seems like we just get Dragon for free. Again, I don't think the Zerath can play the game. Really unfortunate for him as well. His flash just come up. But now, the Hecarim is actually on to Justify. Jarvan wants to take the fight though. The Hecarim is level 5. Flash comes out from Philios. So him. does HDX. Is, will he get the He's Hecarim? He's alive. He's alive. Great team play coming out from Village. Once they saw that Hecrim, the entire ball lane and mid lane just rotated to try their helped up teammate out. They're going to be rewarded for this with the Infernal Drake. Seems like Seth is trying to, to get a steal here. A cheeky little stealer and Archer gets solo killed. Or is, is he not? Oh, the flash comes out from the Orn, but the paint ult Very nice matter. try from Archer. Gets solo killed by Orn is expected as he already hit level 6 and Archer hit level 6 a bit later on. Yeah, Archer's not gonna live that one down. Not by a long shot. Okay. He catches be... Wizard Lord in the jungle. Looks like he's going for the full kill here with all and Yone and Ignitics. Oh, he flashes over the wall to get the kill from Hikarim and he's now on the scoreboard. Yep, really good kill. I think HDX uh, has the red buff right now because of it the root comes down bot lane for the other fight wow that damage on Philios. what can i say 200 years 200 years indeed it's not even level six yet and he's already been able to one shot the enemy uh support there's gonna be another fight here on the top lane justifies trying to kill that orn orn still has his ult though it's gonna be interrupted with the hecarim wow in what the fight as well. from marcher disrupting the all from from the owner and we're chasing the Hecarim. Yeah, I think they're forcing so he the Hecarim. Wants to go for it, and I think he could get the kill here. And they did. Oh my god, those Vayne buffs with the speed, it's massive. The Hecarim even had his ghost up, and Vayne still was able to auto attack him in her ultimate. That's a really huge skill for Archer to get back into the game after the, the two deaths that he had there from Morn. Yeah, meanwhile, the gold lead balloons to 6k. It's only been 7 minutes and 55 seconds. Oh, good <laughs> Oh this my god, he really Pokemon wants to get that kill. <laughs> yeah, let's see, Vlad doesn't have the mana for his ultimate yet, but I think if he did have the mana, he's gonna be dead. Instead, I haven't seen our bot lane back a single time. I think really, really want to add extra pressure. Maybe get the last plating here before they're back. And do they know that the Hecarim is here? Well, they, they should know. There's a ward there. Uh, that's already backing. Hecarim is trying to catch. Oh no, he found that Vlad. That is unfortunate. But is okay. he out? Vlad? He man, might be out here. Wow! Yeah, it's enough mana! The root comes in! It's been four people in bot lane! Rizasaurus Rex and using both summoners to try to get away. Oh my god. That's an absolutely insane rotation from Village School. But yeah. we get the plate and we get the Miss EQ, but we still get the Draven. <laughs> And we got the bot tower before 10 minutes. All five platings. And Archer is, Archer is being really aggressive Ooh. with a good E cancel. And it's a kill from Archer. Solo Bolo in top lane here. Is he going to get the uh, the Ari kill again? Yeah, Archer still has his ultimate. He's already cutting the Ari. There's going to be a massive wave hitting the Ari as well. Ari's trying Ari, to land no it. Charm. He can't. Ari. He's going to be in flash. Ah, Ari. Oh my dead. god. He's alive He's from that play. 1v2. Top lane kingdom. 
my god, Archer. When he can play the game, he plays the game. The cancel on the Orn was just amazing. You, he used the wave so well against the Ari because the wave started hitting her, making sure she can't land the charm on him. And now Village School, their gold lead has just completely ballooned to like 9,000 gold at nine minutes. This is absolutely incredible. I've never seen a lead that much, even when back, I, back when I was competing. Well, it seems like we have a really good um, short game, quick game for in, in our hands here. Ooh, yeah, Hector manages to get up though, dodges the Lux root, but Slappy Cat at 1 HP, we'll see if he manages to live. Uh, he HP gets HP. out. Or does he not? Oh, oh my god. Radu wants this kill here. Finally. Yep. Auto attack, gets the kill. Massive way for Archer here, but he <laughs> loves to harass the Orn. No big deal considering the fact that Orn cannot do anything now. There's no prior in other lanes. Top is just really much as free right now he's chilling farming well there's action everywhere else in, in, in the other lanes and Orn can't really do anything but Radu ults right away to try and kill this draven here yeah he's gonna really have good. to tank that turret shot let's see if he goes out he's gonna be 1v1 with slappy cat he's gonna be taking less than 100 hp and he's shield comes and out the from Vlad. oh my god does he make it out of oh but the Ari ult comes in a shutdown for Ari yeah. however we did get a good pick on Serath, and we did get a good. Pro oh my god, another another binding on Vlad here, and we get Ari kill. That is absolutely insane, Vlad, with these bindings here. Yeah, massive root, a uh, village, no mercy here. 19 kills and 11 minutes. It's gonna be a 1v2 up in the top lane. Archer's another gonna get tank. Came from Archer is Archer is popping off right here, but he gets CC chained and he dies. Yep, massive shutdown. Uh, the Dono comes out to the Hecarim, Vlad just manages to whiff the Draven really, really close. Oh, massive damage coming Burst, out from yeah. the Lux. Coconut Cretan goes legendary with that play. That's insane damage from the Lux here. I didn't even see the Lux ult come out. Like, the animation was so fast. And HCX pressing the mid tower. We have massive vision in bot side. Archer is playing his best weak side here, even though he's a Vayne. Yep, four Seems kills like we're gonna get three. a good prio for another dragon here, whenever they're ready. After yep. just five gets his uh, hold in top lane. Oh, and we catch Wizard Lord here. He goes his, and he dies. Oh my god, HCX is going in. He's still not finished here. Uh, yes, has to go up, out. But he yep. has to go out. I really like the Drakes coming from Village Esports. Not oh only, my, oh my god. god, Archer catching every single E. <laughs> Orn is just dead. Orn is he no has more. no chance of getting out of here alive. Yeah, and the... we get the Orn pick, we get the Hecarim pick, and Radu also gets the Herald. That's a really good flag, by the way, by Justifies, because he gets the assist on, on the Orn kill. So, really uh, good play from him. I do want to see Village take the Drake really quickly though, because they already have the Infernal. They might as well just take the Hex Tech so they can balloon their lead even more. There's gonna be another fight. You know, Wizard Lord, same level as Justifies, but we got Lux on the back. Instant Ooh. one shot coming out from they the Lux. They know, they know that there's only two. Just fight the ult right away, and the EQs, but he doesn't get anything. Yeah, he tried to good, cancel. good, good pick there for, for Hecarim. And it seems like we can really go for the Dragon here. Maybe, maybe they want to greet a little bit more. Seems yeah. like they do. HCX going in. Good binding from Vadye. And we get the kill on Zerath. Four. I, I don't even know how many times now. Warren ults doesn't do too much. And we get the bot tower. Draven ults to try and wave clear. And the Orn misses his E. See now. <laughs> he went through. Draven's, in, Draven's at 1 HP. Coconut Credit sees him. Cradle forces up to get the kill. And does he know the Hecarim's here? He does not. But he can. 1v1 the second and he does but sadly he does not maybe he had enough damage he could kill him yeah and the uh, goes to Hecarim. gale force managed to get him the kill even though at the cost of his own life the Hecarim needs to use the ultimate to kill the aphelios uh, i really like the lux pick now i think about it because their bot lane is just so immobile what orn's going in here uh, observer observer uh, are you awake ah sweet Nice. Yeah, we're going up in. an issue, but we're back. 
<laughs> you're good, you're good, Ming Chao. Um, yeah, there's gonna be Shelly being deployed here. It's gonna be the first inhib down at 14 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not gonna be much longer. They might you know, go for one more. Yeah, one more big fight, and I think that's about it. Will they manage Seems to get Seems like Shelly? they can get another. Yeah, Shelly gets the turret proc, so it's gonna be like one and a half turrets defending the base. Wizard Lord getting taken down low. It's gonna be all hands I think Village is here. looking to end here. Yeah, 14 minutes and 53 seconds. Village with a 16k gold lead. Ooh. Oh my god, HDX with the damage. A quick yep. Yoni combo catches them off guard. And we cast it. We cast the one with good EQ flash from just fights. Orn tries to do something, but he cannot. He goes down to Coconut Crypton. And we're looking for the chase here. Coconut Crypton. Oh my god. Just absolute massacre here. Yep. 200 years. Uh, Ari without the ultimate still has her summoner spells. So let's see if they can mount a good base defense. 15 minutes in, it's going to be really, really difficult for them to fight the super minions coming into the base. And it's going to be 400 years! Catches. Who's going to get good the honey button? But he only gets one. Only Zerath here. And just fights get the kill. L looks like we're trying to end the game right here. We're pushing through the tower. Trying to put more damage. We're going to quit and try to get the Ari here. Gets trumped, gets stunned by the Hecarim, gets, well the Orn gets bursted down here. Yeah, but we're the trying to get the tower first before we sure. kill the Orn, and now the, hit is, the tower is down, two towers are down, and next is exposed. Looks like the game is done 16 minutes um, before we finish this fight. Okay, Surath goes down, Draven goes down, everybody down except for the Ari here. Maybe we can get the Ari first, or we just end the game. First yep, game goes to village school, <laughs> and it ends in 16 minutes, 34 to 6. Yeah, that's gotta be a new record. I mean, village, merciless in their game, really didn't give Concordia Lutheran a chance to even play. Uh, we're gonna be going to game two very shortly here. Uh, yep. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. We'll be back in a couple minutes.
All right, welcome back everyone to game two of the Play vs. Texas Taps finals. My name's Edmund Pascalis. I'm joined by Ben Pham, my co-caster. Hello everybody, Ben Pham here. Second game today, um, class of 2020 alumni, and I'm here with Edmund, who we were both in the league team. And we're here to cast the game, it's game two. First game, it was pretty much a short stomp, I'd say, 36 to uh, 34 to six. A uh, massive performance from HDX, Kogana Cretin, and Shazfais, and massive bindings from Lux, uh, from that uh, Lux. It's actually insane how much, how many cues that he hit that game. Yeah, we're gonna be in champ select for game two right now. Village school gonna ban out Malzahar. Uh, second ban's gonna be coming out. Uh, they're not gonna ban anything actually. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, Concordia Lutherans banned out the Aphelios. Extremely understandable. Our man Jerry popped off on that pick. Uh, so was the Annie. Annie's gonna be banned out. And then it's gonna Soraka be the Soraka ban. Mm -hmm. I think oh, Soraka. I'm, I'm so confused on the second ban here, which is ban nothing. I'm not sure if yeah. that's an error. Yeah, I think Archer just forgot to ban Yumi, like always. But uh, it's excusable. It's excusable. I can assume that it's a Yumi ban for sure. A Yone ban coming targeting HDX here. Yeah, interesting to see that they didn't ban the Jarvan. I actually think the Jarvan uh, is a pretty good threat for Village. Uh, I want to see Jarvan being first pick here if I were them. Oh, it's a instead Silas, it's Silas. Hover. Could it be Silas Jungle? I mean, this is a flex it pick. It actually could be away. Silas Jungle, you're right. It could be a flex pick here in top lane and mid lane too. Yeah, so I actually eat my words. I do like the Silas first pick. Uh, I would have liked to see Hecarim being banned out though, because uh, I think of the of all of the champions last game, probably Hecarim posed most of a threat to Village. Yep, as we a see the Yumi, Yumi lock in without the ban. And Yumi it came Kane. Over. Yumi Kane. Is this the return of Village's Yumi Kane, but played by Concordia Lutheran? I'm actually very excited to see how it's gonna play out. That's really interesting. They just pick up the Yumi and they pick up the Kane, taking it from HCX. I wonder what he's going to play. Maybe he's Cassiopeia. Yeah, I would like to remind everyone that Yumi's gotten reworked, right? Now she has the friendship stacks, which means she's more uh, efficient if she is latched onto the ADC instead of the Kane. So it's going to be a very weird dynamic uh, seeing the Yumi Kane come out, uh, Red 1 and Red 2 for Concordia Lutheran. It's going to be Senna Caitlyn for um, Village. Senna Caitlyn, a really, really. Good poking and massive range for Caitlyn and Senna with the pokes. It's going to be a hard time for Yumi. Maybe it's going to be a Yumi Nezro just to like dash away from the stuns, from the roots. And a Kali hover and picked. Yeah, they're really... This is a village draft in Concordia Lutheran's uh, page right now. I mean, look at Yumi, Kane, Akali. That's three champions that we love to like play. Seems like they're just going all in this game. Last game was a pretty team pick. Uh, chain champ select, but now it's Akali strong pick for toast, toasty with toast, and Yumi Kane a really good hardcore combo banning Graze from just Pfizer. I'm not sure if they understand that it might be South Jungle or not, but they just ban it just in case. Yeah, I actually still think they should ban Jarvan anyways because Jarvan is just that oppressive of a champion. Uh, I'm curious to see as to what village is gonna pick for their laners into these two, into the uh, Concordia Lutheran's Akali. A Malphite ban. Yeah, Malphite ban comes out. I think it's a good ban. Malphite is really, really strong, even though he has been nerfed last patch. So uh, the uninteractive gameplay, uh, as I call it, is probably what Village does not want to deal with right now. And that's respectable, even though they have the Silas and they can still steal the Malphite ult. A Pantheon ban targeting Archer seems like they think that the Silas could be mid instead of jungle or even top lane. Yeah, I think Orn might be a, either Orn or Hecarim. Uh, not Hecarim, sorry, because Kane's already being picked. I think Orn is a good option to be banned for Village right now. I really don't think the Draven or the uh, a Mundo ban coming out. Yeah, I do agree with that ban as well. Uh, Village doesn't really have that much CC, so that. Mundo's shield is actually very effective. Lucian comes out for Lucian Yumi. Concordia Lutheran. It's going to be Lucian Yumi. I think Lucian Yumi in solo queue can be very, very good, but I feel like there are better ADCs. The Siren than... Pick comes in. 
Okay, Archer coming out with the Scion pick. I Now I'm wondering, is this Silas going to be mid or is this Silas going to be jungle? This last pick is going to reveal to us uh, what the case may be. A kill mid. It seems like it's a kill mid for HCX and it's going to be a Silas jungle. Uh, Concordia ban Graze, which would be now a voided ban because it really doesn't do much after they just realized we fixed, first picked Silas jungle. Yep, good maneuvering by the village school, making sure that, you know, Concordia wastes a couple bands. It's going to be the Kled top. Kled top. Scion. Yeah, this is going to be a hard counter for the Scion. So I'm actually very curious as to how Archer's going to play this lane out. Honestly, if I were in their shoes right now, I'd be telling HDX to go top with the Kale and go mid Scion into the Akali, because Scion hard rolls the Akali players. This is a really in interesting draft from both sides. I think this is the most even draft that we've had so far. Yeah, I, I would say Concordia Lutheran's draft uh, is a little bit better than Villages if they were equal skill because uh, you can never discount Akali, Kane, and Kled. These are very like high skill ceiling champions where execution matters. Uh, meanwhile, Village, they kind of go for like the Kale Scion, which is like bread and butter scaling. Uh, however, I am kind of worried about Kale and Senna. That lane kind of seems vulnerable to dive if they're not careful. Uh, I'm interested to see this game. It seems like we're picking solely for the late game with Silas, Kale, Caden, and even Senna coming out here for the scaling champions. And well, the enemy team with Luce and Yumi could really be um, a, such a hassle to deal with with all the dash and all the roots and stuns and slows here. Yeah, I think it's going to be very important for Village uh, bot lane to not fall behind in the early game. Uh, if the bot lane falls behind in the early game, it makes it very difficult for Kale to scale, uh, especially to like level 11 when she starts getting uh, the range and her passive as well as a better ultimate. Uh, and it's really up to Radu and Silas to manage all of these lanes independently. Uh, meanwhile, for the the Scion and Kled lane, I, I really think Archer can approach it one of two ways. He could do it the Baos FFS way where he, you know he proxies the lane and make sure Kled like either has to choose the kill or the farm, uh, or Archer has to play like mechanically much better than this Kled to win the lane. If not, he's gonna just gonna be killed in lane over and over. I think most of the most of the action going around the map will be between Silas and Kane here. Both are very skirmishy champions. Silas is significantly weaker uh, when he hits level three towards uh, compared to Kane because Silas without items is not really too much of a threat. And Kane, maybe if he's fighting bot lane with Salas, with the Yumi, is going to be a large, a huge disadvantage for for our team. Yeah, I think Salas is good in the two v twos, though. You know, if he can hit the AOE, you know, Q, if he can lock up a champion and hundred to zero within one full combo. Um, I am also a little bit worried because Kane now he's gonna be wanting to go red Kane. I think looking at Village's comp. And if he's going red cane, that means he has to camp Scion, right? So uh, if not, and if he's going blue cane, I think it's a much riskier approach for Concordia Luthan. One that can pay out, but that also involves, you know, getting ahead gold-wise, uh, getting kills in ganks, and not really very easy to execute for someone uh, who's on the cane. I think we should also keep in mind here that um, Kill is not really a champion, though she has level 6. So HTX is going to be pretty, pretty... I guess passive or just straight up not going to be that impactful towards the the early stages of the game, and just fives maybe have to play a safer rotation in jungle and might not go for the invades like as we seen in the first game, and maybe even the worst case scenario we give away two crabs, which I hope that just never happens. Yeah, I think there's a lot of kill pressure on the cane, especially early since Akali. Uh, very early on has a lot of threat going into the Kale, Kane as well, you know. If Kale gets ganked uh, and she's like further up in the lane without like Silas or anyone backing her up, I think it's like summoner spell or dead. Well, it seems like the game is starting now and we'll see what happens in the first minutes of the game. Yeah, let's see who has the better skins. You can see we have uh, Ashen Slayer, Silas, Lemberjack, Scion. Uh, but base Senna coming out from Vlad. 
uh, and base Lucian coming out from Rizosaurus Rex as well. So the very interesting skin choices here. The massive flex between the two jungles, Ashen, Night Silas, a prestige skin, and a prestige Nightbringer cane also. That is insane, insane value for these skins. All right, we already, already see things picking coming out. Topside for Village School here. <laughs> it's gonna be the top side invade. Let's see if they can catch the Kled. All five people already making their way to the top lane. I think it's gonna be a five point as well from uh, Concordia Lutheran. HDX with Mastery 7 on the KO. I highly doubt that Concordia will fall for this again after what happened in the first game. Kled already rotating out of the <laughs> three bushes. Maybe he knows that something's going on. But it seems like he's padding through the jungle. Does Village know this? This is pretty big brain from the clan. If they're going to be invaded anyways, might as well just invade them, right? I think they're going to go for an early ward here on the blue side camp. Uh, they might even take the red camp here. Yeah, we see recalls though coming out from two members of Village. I think uh, they're going to go back bot. The Kled is not going to ward, but he is going to be spotted by that spotted here. Yeah, on the way out. Nothing like, no trades happening though. Ooh, scratch that. That's going to be the Q. Archer 452 uses the shield to counter. That's going to be one trade for the Scion, actually. A lot of action that results into nothing too much. And we have the first clears. Kane starting blue and, well, Salas starting blue also. Okay, yeah, so both junglers st uh, starting on opposite sides of the map here. No cheesy ganks or invades. Ooh, HDX is actually already very aggressive using the lethal tempo there. He actually wins out the trade onto Shenzi. Ooh, manages to hit her with the E once again as well. Good trade. As expected, Radu is not going for that invade. He's not going for the early level 2 gank. They're already pathing right down to Raptors. Yeah, this is going to be a less, you know, chaotic early game from both teams. Uh, firstly, because the invade didn't work out, and secondly, because I think that's just the nature, right? But I like how Doxy's actually able to secure the push into the mid lane. Shenzi's actually going to be trading level oh my god, already massive poke from this kill here. Yeah, we said there's going to be kill pressure, but <laughs> actually we were lying. There's going to be, you know, a trade up in the top lane. And Botlane being really aggressive, knowing that it's Yumi in support. Ooh, massive damage coming out here oh, from There's Coconut no Threaten. chance for Rizosaurus Rex to even walk up to hit the minions with this massive range from Caitlyn and Senna. Yeah, that's the trouble, I think. When you have um, an ADC that gets out range and you're on Yumi, you really can't do that much. Except, you know, just sit back and uh, farm the minions under the turret. Ooh, good E from Archer there. I think it might have been a draft error over the Concordia side because they could have easily picked Ezreal and high, uh, better chances of dodging and even farming with the Q and uh, having the E to escape better than the Lucian, I'd say. Yeah, I actually think Twitch or, you know, maybe even Zeri would be a better option. Ooh, Archer is actually looking for the solo kill there, but decides to go back knowing that the turret's going to kill him if he goes any further. It's going to be the Kane ganking the top side. Let's see if Archer spots this out. Archer, I think, is a bit too zoned in. He's a bit too aggressive, and Kane is going in for the top side gank. Ooh, good dodge. But it's gonna be Archer the has least no bad. mana. No mana. Good Q from Clad. Archer is going to fall down for first blood in Concordia side. Oh, okay. I was gonna say if he was gonna go for the Kane, you know, try to trade it out, but no, he's gonna bounce it out and uh, instead get the wave. What See if there's gonna be a dive. Do here for a trade. Looking at mid here, trying to get a pick on the Kali. Um, I think that Village might know that Kane is topside here. Radu Ooh, already Akali? having his eyes on boss side Scuttle. Yeah, Akali no it's shroud. Going to be a here, flashes in, hits the E, hits the W, but he's going to fall down to Akali, and there's yeah. not enough damage to finish her off. She lives with one HP. Kane comes into mid, and for a gank here on kill, misses the W. It's just auto right. attack with the red buff. And he the kill his auto. He stands still in one place, hitting the kill. I think the kill's gonna get a kill here, but she flashes out. Alright. Still. Oh. oh my god, the massive kill. The E and the Q bursting down from the kill. Kane yeah. is just too, 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 too aggressive here. For no reason. 
Yeah, the Kale was really waiting for that Q cooldown. Uh, it's a good play for Village because they actually get something back after losing those two kills. Uh, even though they are down in kills, they still are up in gold. 600 for Village School. Uh, but right, like as we discussed early game, uh, that Kane is going to be pitching a tent top side because he wants to get the stacks for Red Kane on the Scion. I think most of the gold is up in top lane where Archer's pretty much bullying the Clyde here, pushing all the way down to tower. I think this is the third time he's done that. And bottling with a massive poke here and massive slow, a root hits down from that. Ooh. But nothing comes out of it. Fancy feet from Coconut Cretan can't do anything though. Rizosaurus Rex is already, you know, out of the lane. Let's see if Archer can get the solo kill here. We have Justifies behind him, but Toasty McToast, he has the rage come up. It's gonna be really close because this Kled can just remount, and that's gonna be like not being chilling for Archer. The he remount does comes not in. see the silence there. Kled comes in, loses scroll, and he's one HP. Fight right. comes down in mid here. HDX is level six. He she is evolved for stage one. The range comes okay. out, and she gets a solo kill on the Kali. Kane comes mid for the gang. Barrier pops for HDX, all pops for HDX, Kane cannot finish her off. Oh, well it's a really played. close fight and it's good for HDX. Two kills for him. Insanely well lane. played by HDX. He knows he has the Berserker Greaves, so he can actually like kite the Akali and the Kane really, really well. Manages to get so many auto attacks before, you know, they manage to damage the Kale. So that's why the double kill happened. They also had the wave on the on their side, so that the Second minions were getting Second for bot lane here, massive poke coming out of Caitlyn and Senna here. Ooh. Lucius has no chance of touching the minions there or even playing the game. Dashes in for some reason, gets the minion and dies, gets punished for it. Yeah, a huge punish coming out from Village School. Really well calculated by Coconut Cretan. He's playing like FXN Saber right now. Uh, now it's gonna be the Yumi alone under the turret. 250, 280 HP. She Let's might see look to stay for this and she's gonna get punished for that. A massive poke from Senna here. Yeah. Ooh, the trap hits, the high shot hits. But the root misses, but we yep. still get the kill on Glad. the Yumi. Massive kill on the Senna as well. Uh, the Akali tried to roam down a little bit, but they couldn't. Uh, the play was already happening before the Akali could come. Uh, HDX getting massively fed here. He's going to be level 8 uh, to the Akali's level 6. He also has a red buff, which is just going to be so oppressive for the Akali. This is insane pressure already. We've seen that there's only the one to two kills over in village side, and the gold league was not that much. Now suddenly it's five to two. Yeah, Archer is gonna ult to the top side, manages to catch the wave. Let's see if he catches with Kled. No, he just catches the wave there. Uh, manages to get the cannon minion. Yeah, 69 gold. Um, but Toasty McToast with the fancy feet manages to dodge Archer's combo. It's gonna be like a short trade, but I think Kled won that. For sure. Massive pressure already from Kled, even though he didn't back yet. Seems like yeah. he's gonna back after this wave. And yeah, possibly, possibly get a really, really good item for a better prior in top lane here. Ooh, good catch oh. for Archer. Uh, but yeah, it's been eight minutes and no team actually has attempted to do the Drake yet. So uh, I would like to see Village being more um, you know, conscious of the objectives here. Yeah, I saw Kane trying to look down for bot lane, possibly go for a dragon there, but I think there was no problem on bot side. Bot lane was pushing too much, but they were scared of the send on Kitten poke that could disable everything that they work hard for. Arch right. is looking really aggressive here, even though he's getting poked out by Kled. Yeah, at the moment, Archer doesn't have any topside vision. If Kled comes to punish him, it's re really going to be a bad day for the Scion because he doesn't have ult to get out either. Just the Another flash. Fight going topside, no scroll for the Kled here. Archer gets a Q knock up. He's fighting. Kled ignites him. It seems like Archer realizes his mistakes here. Runs back. Scares of Skrull. But he goes in right here. Kled gets the scroll back. Alt in. Archer has no way to escape. Flashes away from the Kled ult. Hits right. knock up. Skrull is no longer there. But Archer has no mana. And it looks like Kled is going to get the second killer. And Archer oh. has to fall down. He dodges the Q. He hits the knock. Oh, he doesn't hit the oh knock up. Oh my god. He's <laughs> 1 HP and he doesn't fall down. And Justifies is here, jungle And we roll. get the kill. Good rotation from Justifies here. Archer with the fancy feet dodges a lot of things there that I can not even like keep track of. Oh yeah, but the Kane is gonna be here top side. The flash comes out. Massive, it's gonna be... root, massive CC on the Lucian. Kane gets a trade on the Scion. Does not matter. Justifies is here. Hits the E. Hits the W. Scion. Passive. Yep. Gets the kill. Finishes it off. Archer 
Yeah, that's a really fair trade. All right, Slappy Cat taken so low here. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Blue Team's already got the first turret. Yumi can't even farm underneath her own turret. Uh, it's still, it's a very good play by Toasty McToast. Uh, unfortunately, he missed a couple of the Qs, uh, and that led Archer to survive until Justifies came. But I, in my opinion, Wizard Lord could have come topside earlier. You know, whichever jungler came first to that top sky uh, skirmish would have gotten the double kill, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think that was a really, really good action over in topside. But a really, really good macro play from Justifies rotating first before Wizard Lord, and they get punished for it. Ooh, unstoppable coming from Archer. This is gonna be catching the Kled. Massive damage, not really, even though he's building tank. Kled round is gonna throw top lane. the wrong way. Yeah, round two in top lane indeed. He's gonna have to dismount pretty soon, but Shenzi with the flash out. Yeah, Akali jumps in with the E, gets bursted down the disrespect from this Akali jumping down the kill, and then flashing out, and then dying. It's just still has all kills. Still one has one a barrier as well. The flash. And Amazing. Wow, what a play from HCX here. Getting that 1v2 kill. Yep, we have this, the Baos FFS, Nemesis, and uh, FXN Saber on our team here. This absolutely incredible pressure from top side and bot side. I was wondering when they're gonna uh -oh. get the dragon. Uh oh, yeah, that's <laughs> gonna be a that's dead kill. Sled. Courtesy of Archer, Coconut oh, Curtain doesn't realize Kretin. he's tanking the turret. The shutdown comes from the Lucian, but then Justifies is on the other side. Rizosaurus Rex taken solo the second. Oh my hit god! Of the Q, oh, to wow, what a good cancel from the E here. The Yubi dashes onto the Kali, gets the W, gets the extra AP damage. But Justifies is looking to run away. E's out, misses the second E. Doesn't matter as he is looking to run away here. Alts the cane to try and buy some time. Dashes Ooh. out. Get the w. We might get the kill here. Oh, but Vlad gets the trade. Yep, so Kale is rotating. Kale is he rotating, might but be out. he might be out. I think it's a fair trade with uh, yep. both junglers going down here. But Draken is up, and we have pretty decent bot pressure. But before that, Vlad has to back for an item. He has not backed, I think, once this game until now. Yeah, that, uh, you know, 1v1 between Shenzi and Justifies definitely looked like Kingen versus, or not, sorry, not Kingen. Uh, wh who was it? Zeka versus Chovy. But yeah. now HDX fully unleashed. Damage onto Shenzi. Toasty McToast with the ultimate. But HDX is not even low. The Senna ult comes in. He's dominating. Wizard Lord's trying to come to do something, but he can't. Instead, it's just going to be one for nothing. There's nothing that they can do towards this scale here. She scaled so, uh, so high up. It's level 11 from the scale. With the extra five um, five stack on the on the passive, getting that wave. But look at Kretin, one v two here. Seems like he's, he's being disrespected too much. Lucian dashes in, Ooh. but no damage. Look at Kretin stays. Oh. Gets, the, he gets the combo. Oh my God, that burst down on the Lucian and the Yumi gets caught up by Vlad here. What a combo from Coconut Cretin. Now they've got Wizard Lord though. It's gonna be a one v two. Can Vladie and Coconut Cretin fight this the out? CC he's out of in on the Kane. Kane, Red Kane with. If Prowler's I'm not claw? wrong, that is Prowler's Claw on Red Cane. Red Cane with... I've never seen that build before right now. <laughs> An ult's happening in the mid lane. Shenzi taking down to less than half health. The boss FFS is so strong. Archer might even get the soul kill here. Him. He does. Justifies, in the meantime, getting the uh, Scuttle Crab as well as the Rift Herald. Let's see if Village wants to push for the end. It's 13 minutes, 32 seconds. The second tier bot turret's already gonna go down. Senna's already gonna catch out Lucian. The ult comes in. That's gonna be some massive damage. Uh, Archer tanking the turret though. He's still tanking the turret. That's just how tanky Scion is. A lot more action this game than last game. Already 18 to 5, 13 minutes with five towers already. Yep. And it looks like it's gonna be on the quick hit. Oh, before that, Vlad's get caught here with the Yumi ult. Lucian is looking to get this kill here. Vlad dodges the Yumi Q. Lucian dashes mm -hmm. up into Vlad hits the root. Yep, and Wizard Lord's like out of here over the wall. Already. But Archer oh, is gonna EQ over the wall, follows up with Justifies. Toasty McToast gonna dismount. It's gonna be a dead cled really soon. Archer on the rampage, but Vlad's gonna die. Unfortunate, but a good trade. For village school. Yeah, Ping's coming out from the village school. They want to take this fight. The they Sion want this flank here. Sion, Silas and Caitlyn, all of them are here. Wizard Lord's gonna go on Coconut Cretin with. I don't think there's anything this king can do here. Coconut Cretin catches out the W, dashes away. Gilforce is out to dodge the KQ. 
and we get the cane, and now we also get the Yumi after <laughs> the it was after really the funny Lucian dies. Watching the um, Lucian, uh, I mean the Yumi ult get stolen by Justifies. Is, this is absolutely insane. Vlad with the time wasting, getting them all the way to the alcoves so that we can flank. Massive big brain play from Vlad here. And we are looking to pressure down the bot tower. HDX in top, top lane, trying to trade with the Kled, trying to get more pressure down. And the Kali is already showing up top side, not bot side. We drop the hill down bot side, get this tower, and possibly get the in here. here. Yeah, Shelly's already gonna collide with the first turret. Let's see if it's gonna be a second. Uh, Shenzi is going for the it, team, it, although it's not going to happen. All right, Scion in the thick of the fight here. Coconut Cretan is actually going to be chased down by the Trying Kled. Trying to cut down this Kled here. Massive damage coming from the Kled, but cannot finish Coconut Cretan off. Massive flight coming. Lucian gets the ult with the Yumi, and they get the Vlad. Yeah, meanwhile, HDX is actually still on the turrets. It's going to be a Just really spies. messy fight from both sides Just here. Just with the fancy. Akali ult dashes in, gets Lucian. Now, HDX is here, gets Yumi, and looks like the game is over. Yep, it's gonna be 20k gold lead for the side of Village. Shenzi's trying to run away with the Kali Shroud, but it's gonna be super minions in the base. Second inhibitor is almost gonna go down. HDX chasing Shenzi. Oh my god, the massive damage, the massive DPS from HDX. He does not care. He's in the base, trying to poke down the credit. He cannot even leave the base. Yep, HDX. It's already so close to a victory here for Village School. Oh my god, the, the damage ult coming out. Let's kill here. This is Rizzo Zorus X. And even the Kali coming in does not even have the damage to finish him off. And he's going for the cane here. Oh my god, he does not die. That's absolutely insane. Kale. There's absolutely insane movement and insane cutting from AZX here. He might even get the quadro kill here with the Kali. Oh, he does no, not. Kurt Kurt gets the kill. And it's going to be the quadro kill unofficially. And Village School ends the game 17 minutes 31 to 7. And we are champions? I believe so. We're, that's going to be it, folks. We just wrapped up the Play vs. Texas Taps Championship for Spring. We're going to have the Play vs. Cup in, I believe, the fall, as well as another Texas Taps Championship back then. So the action's not going to stop. Uh, wish you have a good summer. Good luck on your exams. Thank you for watching and thank you for the support you've given us. And I'm also joined by Ben Pham. And hope you guys have a nice rest of your day and a nice rest of your week.